Welcome back to the Adventures of a Disney Dad podcast. My name is Matt Brandenburg, and I am a dad of three and the founder of AdventuresofADisneyDad.com. I'm a travel agent with the Magic for Less Travel and your host. I'm joined by my podcast co-host, Chip Robinson, who is soon to be a dad of five. Chip, how's everything going tonight? Oh, it's going well. The weather's starting to turn. It's starting to turn into yeah. fall. Yeah. It's cold, it's football up here in the Midwest, and it's a lot of fun. It's a good time of the year to live here. It's not too hot, not too much rain, all that kind of stuff. And Halloween's coming around the corner, which is fun for all the kids and everything else, too. Yeah, being football, obviously coaching football and top team in the state of Ohio, so it's, it's a great time right now for me. The Baselin Tigers. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love it. You'll have to fill us in on how the big game goes this weekend against that team in D.C., um, really rooting for the Tigers there in Ohio. And here we're going to be getting into a, a really fun episode tonight. We'll be discussing my family's recent split stay at Kidani at Animal Kingdom uh, Lodge in Saratoga Springs and the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, which was a blast. Uh, it was a short trip, only four or five days. We're going to talk about some of the things I learned, some of the things that might help other people try, you know, trying to plan their family vacations. I've got a lot of thoughts on Kidani that I think will ruffle some feathers. I know, Chip, it's <laughs> you and I have talked about it before, and we were talking about it a little bit while I was on the trip. Yeah, and I, sure. some some thoughts on Saratoga Springs. And, man, I've got a lot to say about the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So we'll get into all of that. We've also got a couple fun new segments we're going to do. We're going to – including some overrated or underrated Disney edition – we're going to do some Would You Rather Disney edition. And then we've got a few listener questions that were sent to us via social media. We'll get into answering those at the very end. And we're really looking forward to getting into it. So let, let's talk a little bit about the split stay trip that we just had for our family. Uh, a little bit of a, a modified trip report if you listen to other podcasts. We went down uh, last weekend with my in laws and our three kids. And we stayed two nights at Kadani and Animal Kingdom Lodge. We got in Thursday the 21st, two nights there, and then we did two nights at Saratoga Springs. I love split stays. This was a really unique opportunity because there was a promo that Disney was running a while back um, for 35% off. And one day when I was you know, trying to book trips for some guests, I saw there was the 35% off for the Savannah View at Kadani which to me is a, a once in a lifetime type of experience to, to do that kind of room. I think it was the annual pass holder discount that I got, but they, they were always running, you know, anywhere from 10 to 35% off for various criteria and doing different discounts. And I, I convinced my wife, our middle son, those three, absolutely loves Jack Skellington. And the, we've never been to the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. He is just at that age where he, like, everything is so magical, to him, right? Where your kids start to get to, like, five and above is where they really start to understand, I think, that some of the stuff isn't necessarily real. And the characters may not necessarily be the characters. I don't, from I, don't, the I, don't know what you, I don't know what you're talking about. And that, and that's that's my it. man. I, 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 I like it. And so to me, it was like, this is such a great opportunity because he loves this character. And this character is the theme of the, the night for the Not So Scary Halloween Party. And you, like the you only can't, time you can uh, see him, right? It's the only time. It, it's, it's the only time you can do a character meet with Jack and Sally. I think there's some times where uh, they're out for like Marathon Weekend or random run Disney races and things like that. But outside of like the off chance at an event, or something else. It's the only time you can do a formal character meet and greet with Jack and Sally. And so we were really excited. And I, I, so I was putting these two things together. It was like, you got this great Savannah View room. We can do a lot of resort time considering we're going to be, you know, out with the kids late. I'm not good at kind of pulling things back and doing resort time. I think that's something Chip that you and your family are really good at. And I'm trying to learn, but I, oh, I like to be, best. Yeah, I like to be in the theme parks. And so I'm trying to learn from you guys to be at the pools a little bit more. And, and my wife is is much more inclined to spend some more time relaxing at the pools. But I was thinking, you know, 
you've got the excuse of being at the room to see the animals. So that'll help keep me back. And then we're going to be able to keep the kids out late for the party. And then in January is when we always do our big family trip that we, we love. It's our favorite time of year to go. You running the marathon this year? No, no, <laughs> I, I saw, no, not, not this year. I, I will tell you, I tried to convince my wife like a week or two ago. I tried to convince her to, to do a charity bib at the last minute because we will be there that, that first week of January. Yeah. And we kind of mutually decided it's not, you know, it's not going to happen this year, but uh, I've done it enough. I think in 2025, I may shoot for Dopey, but that, that first week though, is our favorite time of year to go. The weather is awesome. It's, it's really, really perfect. It's not too hot. The crowds are moderate outside of like the marathon running crowd, which, you know, they are not in the parks late and frankly, they're not in the parks that much at all. So it's, it's a really fun time to go, but for that trip, we're staying at a two bedroom villa at Saratoga. I personally never say, stayed at Saratoga. So that's like one of the, we're trying to check the boxes of any resorts that we have stayed at. And I was like, well, we can do the Savannah view at Kidani for this trip for two nights because it's, it's even at 35% off, it's expensive. And then we can switch and do a split stay the second two nights at Saratoga Springs and get a preview where there was a pretty heavy discount on that room too. So we did a one bedroom villa at Saratoga so that we can get an idea of what that resort's like a little bit before we go in January. And you guys, the, you guys weren't doing many park days, right? I'm a park guy, man. It, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't keep myself out of the theme parks when we go and it's really a source of frustration for my wife for sure because I get there and I want to push it a little more than I should so really what I need to start doing is like stop buying tickets for every day that we're there so then you can't go but we we definitely went we went to the parks every day I didn't, I, for some reason, I was thinking you weren't going every day, but that makes, okay. I, I, that was probably my plan, and we probably talked about that, you and I, separately. Like, I, I would have liked to not go to the parks every day, but, like, once I get there, you know, I want the kids to have fun, and I want them to be able to do the things that they want to do, and it's hard to not go is, is really where I come down yeah. with. But that that's one of the biggest lessons I think I learned on this trip in particular Nothing in Disney ever happens as fast as you think it's going to happen. If you think that you're going to be able to get to the parks in a certain amount of time, you never know how long it's going to take to get to the bus, how long the bus is going to take to get you to the parks, how long it's going to take to get through security and all of that other stuff. And it never, ever, ever happens as fast as you think it's going to happen. Like, if you think you can get to dinner and like, oh, you know, we've got a 5 or 6 p.m. reservation, we can squeeze a ride in before dinner. When you when you bring in the bus and the different transportation options and, and just getting there, it never happens as quickly as you think it's going to. And even with Genie Plus, you never get through the line as fast as you think you're going to get through it. Never. And, and would you agree? I mean, I, I think that's... It's, it's hard it's to the, realize for the big for the big attractions like the e attractions 100 percent. now like living with land you get through it quick but like when i rode tron the first time we were in there for an hour before we got on that, so that was we had tron at the not so scary halloween party for the adults my my daughter's tall enough she's five but it's still too scary but we wanted my my wife wanted to ride it before she would ever even consider it our, da- yeah. our daughter got on it, which is completely fair. So I stayed with the kids while the adults all wrote it. My brother-in-law, my wife, and my two in-laws. They had a blast. But I'm thinking, it's Mickey's not so scary, scary Halloween party. It's going to be a shorter wait anyway, because hopefully there's not that many people, you know, that are that are doing it. And, you know, with virtual queue, it's going to be fast. They were, they were gone for, for 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. You know, and, and you think it's going to be a lot faster. And, and the same happened to us. The first night we got there, we landed at the airport, I think like 140. We take, we used Happy Limo, which I, I love their service. They they gave us, a, they brought us a Sprinter van. And the Sprinter van took our entire family, uh, you know, eight people or whatever, and all our luggage 
to straight to the resort. So we were by ourselves. We didn't have other people riding with us. And it was fairly affordable. I mean, it was 150 bucks, which when you compare it to mirrors, you know, the cost per person, it's really not that much more expensive. So the driver helped us get our bags into the Sprinter van, take us straight to Animal Kingdom Lodge, dropped our bags at the room, and I met the stroller uh, from Kingdom Strollers. The, the gentleman brought our stroller there that, that we rented. So I met him at like 2.30, and I had dinner reservations at Via Napoli at 5, I think, 5 or 5.30. And I'm thinking, all right, so we get the stroller at 2.33. We're getting the kids back to the room. That's plenty of time to like get to Epcot, get a ride in, get to dinner, you know, all in that same kind of area. So, so hold we hold on, so hold on. We gotta go back to the original. Where was your room ready when you got there? You said it never is. Our, our room was ready when we got there, but where where the mistake was made is that it's really hard. You know, even when you see it on a map and you talk to people, Kadani is really really big. Jeez. And you you can't understand how far of a walk it is from the Kadani lobby to your room when you're on the far end of that resort. And you add in, so my in-laws were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, right next to the lobby, beautiful room. I absolutely loved their room. I was jealous because I thought that their room was a little bit more modern, really kind of more our style, still a little small. But it didn't have the Savannah view and, and things like that. But it was close to the lobby and convenient. But what I didn't realize is not only do we have to get us and the kids from our room at the far end of Kidani back to the lobby, but then we've got to get from the lobby on a transportation bus to Animal Kingdom Lodge, which so the, those come every five to ten minutes. Because Still at that, that time... Band. Still yeah, it's, it's the it's the white, the white van that drive. There's a there's a white van that holds I don't know probably fifteen or twenty something like that that'll take you from Kandani to Jumbo House, which is the main Animal Kingdom Lodge resort. And so you add in, you have to wait five or ten minutes to that, and then they have to drive you down there. Got to get the in laws, and then you've got to wait for a bus. And when you get the bus, you you have to take the bus over to. Uh, Epcot. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, we're going to, I'm standing at the bus stop after we got, we finally get there. We're waiting at the Epcot bus. And at that point in time, I'm like, we're going to miss the lightning lane for Ratatouille, which was the ride that we chose to try and do before dinner. Like there's, there's zero chance we're going to make it at this point. It's like 430 <laughs> or something. And I'm thinking through in my mind, and the, the next bus doesn't come for like another 20 minutes, of course, because that's the way it always works out. I'm like, not only are we not going to get to ride this thing, but I'm going to be, we're going to be late for, for dinner at this point. Because I'm thinking of how long it's going to take us to walk from the front of Epcot to the back of Epcot, right? Oh, yeah. And so then it, it dawned on me as I see the Hollywood Studios bus pull up, a light bulb goes off. And I'm like, we're going to take the bus to Hollywood Studios, and then we're going to take the Skyliner to the back of Epcot, which is right where Ratatouille is right where Via Napoli is. We made it, got right on Ratatouille in like 10 minutes, got over to dinner and we were like five minutes late. So it ended up being that's a the, great that's night. The, that's the plan anytime you're going to Epcot, especially if you're rope dropping. I, uh, we don't rope drop. <laughs> but well, but for, for, for the rope droppers, that's a, that's a huge okay. key. And, and I think, you know, the learning experience there was, again, Going back to everything takes way longer than you think it's going to. Correct. Because of the transportation at Disney. I love it. I love not having to rent a car, but it just it just takes a while. And it's never gonna arrive as quickly as you think it's gonna arrive. Let's let's talk a little. I was gonna ask about it. Animal King. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, I, you ask me about that in just just one second, because I wanna I wanna say one other thing. But like the 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 big picture point was. People underestimate the amount of planning that it takes for transportation at Walt Disney World. And there are a lot of ways that you need to figure things out. And we had another kind of issue that I'll talk about at the end of our trip, trying to get to Kona at the Polynesian from Saratoga. But like you really, really at Walt Disney World now have to think through how you're getting places and think through how long it's going to take. That, that was kind of one of my 
overarching notes from the trip that, you know, I, I think really needs to be reiterated to people, especially if you haven't gone before, because nobody that's going for the first time is going to be standing there for that bus to Epcot and be able to think all that through without hearing somebody tell them. Because that, that walk from the front of Epcot to the back of Epcot alone would take 30 oh, minutes. It's forever. And it's miserable, you know, like it's hot and, you know, it, it, all those things. So let's get into Kidani. Let's talk all about right. this. So, so I know you went to Kidani and I know you guys did did that because you were going to make you not so scary. What are your thoughts on Kidani? You saw, take away, I know where your room was. You were over in Bam Bam 12. That's a King's Island reference for all for all those people out there. But I know you were far away. Besides that, give your thoughts on Kadani. It's it's definitely like for my wife and I, it's probably a one and done. And it's not that like if the right deal came along that I wouldn't consider it. Like to me, it was just it was fine. It was fine. The the Savannah view itself met my expectations. It was a once in a lifetime thing. It, it, there is no other place in the world, I mean, outside of Africa, where you're going to wake up and have giraffes outside of your window, like 100 feet away. And, you know, in the middle of the night, there you can use your phone to kind of get night vision and see the animals like laying out there, which is incredible. I mean, and for the kids, it is really, really cool. Even with that huge walk to the lobby, being able to look through the windows on either side of the hallway and you're seeing different animals that are, you know, high class zoo animals. I mean, it's a, it's a really cool thing, but it is really, really far. You know, the, the walk that we had was really, really far. There, the rooms need a zhuzh. They I need, they need, the rooms need a little love and I think they're beaten down a little bit. Like when we got there, it, it had to be 80 degrees in our room. And I called down to a cast member and I'm like, I, I don't think, you know, the air is working in here. And they told me that it, it's a motion sensor, which I had never heard before at a Disney resort. But apparently because no person had walked into our room, the air hadn't kicked on for a while. And I'll tell you throughout the entirety of the stay, it was never really like that cold. Maybe that's because people are expected to be opening the balcony door all the time, which is understandable. But to me, it just kind of felt like the room needed a little love. It wasn't that big, which, you know, for our family of five and, you know, having one needing a pack and play that takes up a lot of room, it, it's, it, it hurts. But the biggest problem to me with that, that portion of the resort is that the dining options are so limited. There, there's no, there's no, like, you don't have the traditional cafeteria dining or marketplace that has, like, a full array of, like, sandwiches, fruit, milk, all the things that your kids want. It's just not there. Like, the, so for people that have not been there before, the only restaurant option is Sanaa, which is, is, a, is a really great restaurant. We didn't eat there this time, but I think all the ratings, have you eaten there, Chip? No, we haven't. We've only met Boma and then the Mara. Okay. So the the Mara is is really what I'm talking about that, that Kadani lacks. The Mara is the cafeteria area that virtually every Disney resort has where you can go and get quick service dining. And they, they're going to have everything that your kids need at any time, you know, of the day up until like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And Kadani doesn't have it. So you know, if you are getting back from the parks at nine o'clock and you want milk for your kids or you need a quick snack, you've got nothing. You, you've got a very, very small amount of things in the, the marketplace shop, which that, is much, that, much smaller. That that lobby or that little like convenience store. I mean, I will tell you the one good thing about it is if you have the refillable mug, it's right in there, mm -hmm. which is really, which was really nice when we stayed there. Um, but it's, I mean, you can get zebra domes and in a, in a, a power rate, and that's about all you can get out of there. Yeah. And, and that, you know, for a family with kids that needs those things, that's a huge downside and something that really frustrated with us. Now, that said, I, I don't want to walk all the way down to that lobby anyway, in the middle, you know, late at night because it's way too far. 
So, so to me, it was like a combination of things. And, and the other part of it is that at Animal Kingdom Lodge, I like the Animal Kingdom Lodge, Jumbo House Pool, better than Kidani. The Kidani okay. Water Slide, the Kidani Water Slide to me is a little bit more for older kids. It's a little faster, I think. So with our kids being five and under, you know, they've got the zero entry pool at Animal Kingdom Lodge with a much slower water slide that's more our speed. With the the Mara, which is, you know, a place to get lunch right behind the pool. I think that was much better for us. Animal Splash Kingdom Lodge. Is pretty cool though. The, the Kidani <laughs> Splash Pad is, is a plus. It, it's very cool. And I, I think, you know, with a couple a couple things here and there, I think that there would be a lot of improvement to Kidani. To me, you just put a bus, a bus stop at Kidani. Like its own bus stop that goes straight to the parks. So you don't have to go to Jumbo House to get on a bus to the parks would be a huge improvement. Yeah, and then on top of that, like some more bus stops, maybe at our end of the resort. <laughs> and, you know, you've really got something going there. But I, I think overall, it was a great experience and we loved the room, but because of the Savannah view and, and things like that, but would it be somewhere that we would pick over, say, Saratoga, which we stay in the second half of the trip? I don't, I don't think so now that we've experienced it. One other thing that I think was really frustrating to me that I, even as a travel agent, I didn't know this. The night vision goggles for the Savannah View rooms are no longer available. So apparently, oh. apparently they stopped that with COVID, which I didn't know. But like one of the, the most exciting things that I was excited for, for for my kids, and I think the kids, when I told them and they kind of expected it, was the ability to, to look at the animals at night. So really with there's no lighting on the animals at night which you know you wouldn't expect there to be you're you're kind of out of luck to see them when you get back to your room and it's dark because you don't have the night vision goggles anymore so you don't really have any option to see the animals at night so you really need to plan ahead to like actually have that resort day and spend some time you know doing the activities at the resort and seeing the animals and and things like that but an animal I, I, I'm going to go a negative thing on, on, on Animal Kingdom Lodge in general, both of them. My wife thinks that they are too dark in the rooms. And it's the woods, and I get it's the Africa theme, but it's so dark in there that it's just there. And I wonder if that's why it kind of also feels kind of that, that, that way you kind of felt. Because you text me a little bit and saying it just doesn't feel like it needs a little zhush. I think it does. It needs to brighten up. Yeah, and, and I think you get more of that at, at Jumbo House. Like, my, my in-laws' room was much more modern. It, it felt a lot more like the Grand Casino Tower in Coronado, like a newer, you know, not as themed room, which I really appreciated, and I, you know, nicer bathrooms and things like that. The the dining at Animal Kingdom, at Jumbo House, Boma was amazing. Girls I mean, we... We loved it. I think everybody universally gave it a, a, a great review. The Mara was fine. It's what you expect from a quick service, you know, cafeteria style restaurant. But spending time, the pool was amazing. We loved the pool. So Animal Kingdom Lodge as a whole, I think, you know, gets a high grade from us. Something that we would do again, maybe in a different room or maybe requesting a, a room closer to, to the lobby those kinds of things you're limited in those kind of requests when you want savannah view and, and stuff like that but you know how often do you get out of the pool and walk 20 feet to the back and there's flamingos and giraffes you know within 100 feet you, you just you don't get that experience anywhere else so it, it was it was a really great resort i want to touch quickly on saratoga springs it, it blew us away it absolutely blew us away the room was modern. It was themed, I would call it perfectly because it's it's minimalist. It's not like in your face Disney characters, which we've talked about, you know, on the podcast before. I'm not a huge fan of like having, you know, Disney theming all over the place, you know, in the entirety of the room. It, it's like a, a very classy modern room. The balconies are nice, the grounds are gorgeous. The only downside to me, the pool was awesome. The downside to me was it's it's enormous. And when you, when you get on the bus, there's five bus stops, and it takes forever. 
it's like uh, the same thing. Oki West is the same way. So those that listen in, it's Oki West and Saratoga Springs are very similar in, in that they have multiple bus bus stops inside of the resort. Yeah, and there there's a number of them that have like Coronado has four bus stops, I believe. And I've never felt like I was on the bus as long at any Disney resort <laughs> as I was at Saratoga. And that's where the next the transportation tips come in, in play. As we were we were going to Kona. This is Sunday, so the, the last full day of our trip. We're going to Kona at the Polynesian. And so I'm thinking we'll take the bus to Magic Kingdom and then hop on the monorail, or we can hop on the ferry, whichever one the kids want to do. We got out there, I think our reservation was at 745, and we got out there really early for the bus stop. And two Magic Kingdom buses went past us full. So, yeah. So, uh, and, and I, you know, you expect that another one's going to come right behind it because the drivers have a call button that they can tell, like, the dispatch, hey, we didn't get to this last stop and there's a bunch of people there waiting. I mean, there were probably 20 people at the last bus stop with us. And, you know, they'll send out an empty bus just to that stop and get everybody and get them on their way. First one goes by, and then you expect an empty one to come. Next one just drives straight by, and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know like like how how are how are we gonna get over there so it, it was it was a tough it was a tough experience in, in that regard but um ultimately we got over there the, the breakfast at kona was amazing have you had that before no but i i think i've had some similar but i know you got that i saw the tonga toast on your on your instagram i, I, I got the tonga toast i, I wasn't it, it was good but it wasn't it didn't blow me away because I don't like banana stuff as much. Yeah. So it's it's a huge square of French toast. I posted a picture of it on Instagram, and it's got banana in the in the very middle of the French toast. So it was very good. The food overall was was really great. Service as as always, I think is is awesome. So I would definitely recommend Kona as a breakfast option for anybody. But again, you ha- you have to think through if you're going from one resort to another, how the heck you're going to get there. Because yeah, again, a, it never. That's a downfall, yeah. Yeah, it never happens as as fast as you think it's going to. A couple highlights from the trip, just in terms of restaurants outside of the the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, which I want to talk about a little bit. The the our favorite place far and away, Woody's Rodeo Roundup Barbecue, was awesome. Oh, that's I, so great. I I think I would borderline say that if you've got kids, it's a must do. It's on the more expensive side of the kind of all you can enjoy. It's not, it's family style. So they bring out like a selection of meats. So chicken, different barbecue options, ribs, things it's like not, that. It's not skillets though, right? It's, it's, it's not like a whispering candy. It's just, they just bring out you know, like a platter, right? It's, it's like a big platter of the different meats. But the, the key that we enjoyed the most was they bring out cheddar biscuits for the table first. And they're they're probably some of the best biscuits I've ever made. And and I don't say that lightly. <laughs> like, like, you know, I'm a Southern Ohio kid like you are. Oh, yeah. And I enjoy I enjoy a biscuit. And I'm telling you, they, they were awesome. They give you a bunch of sides also, so you can get, you know, there's different tater tot type options, mac and cheese, baked beans, traditional like barbecue type food. But we all loved the food. The barbecue was surprisingly good for a Disney restaurant. Like, I think we've all kind of gone somewhere and gotten ribs that isn't known for ribs. And oh, yeah. usually, you know, usually you get sub subpar ribs. These were really good. So it was good barbecue. And I, I would definitely recommend it. But the atmosphere is like what's really cool. They do a lot of stuff like your, you know, Andy's coming and the kids and everybody have to pause because you're, you know, the the play or the idea there is that you're a toy. So you guys are all toys in, in Andy's room while you're eating. And so they'll have different things that they'll come in and do, which really only Disney can provide that kind of atmosphere. And it, it's really cool. Miss so characters I, at all? What do you mean? Like, I know there's, I know it's not a character meal, but... It could it be a character meal? 
it should be a character meal. I'm I like okay. I, I, I agree. but the the way that they have the inside set up where like Bo Peep is significantly bigger than you are, you're more of a smaller toy. So like it, okay. the characters wouldn't necessarily fit the the theme. But what I love to see Woody, Jesse, and Buzz walking around and maybe they'll have that kind of thing in the future when like the hype dies down for it. But in, in planning trips for folks, it's probably one of the hardest ADRs I've had to, to get for people. It is really, really difficult and it's really expensive, but to me it's it's worth every every penny in that regard. So that that to me was far and away the best restaurant that we had. Via Napoli really comes to mind. It was very, very good, which for pizza or pizza night, it's it's fantastic. I would I would definitely recommend it to anybody. But Woody's running around a barbecue to me is a must. It's at this point, it's a must do for me with how I feel about it right now. I think we're gonna go there this summer. Uh, I'm a big Toy Story fan, so I, I think it's right up my alley. Yeah, and especially if your if your kids enjoy it, it's it's a lot of fun. And the right. food is it's just surprising. To me, it was surprising. I, I kind of expected like it to be an okay meal. But I never expected to come home raving about biscuits, <laughs> and, and they were they were very very good. So I, I want to talk a little bit about Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Chip, have you done any after hours events at any Disney resorts or any Disney parks? Just the deluxe hours, but nothing not, nothing hard ticket event. Okay. I, thinking about it for the summer because we're gonna have a night where it's just my wife and I. So I'm thinking about doing like one of those like after hour events, but we'll see. I can't go for the because not so scary because it's football season. Yeah. So the I, I highly recommend the after hours events for you and your wife. My wife and I did one earlier this year on a trip. And you know, we got on everything at Magic Kingdom in a less than 15 minute wait as many times as we wanted to do it. And it was it was awesome. The, the park really felt kind of empty and you really thought that you had kind of a, a, a chance to do whatever you wanted and have limited capacity and really enjoy yourselves, especially with like the photo pass photographers, you know, they're all out for that and you, you really get a more intimate experience. So for a date night for two adults that enjoy Disney, I, I definitely would recommend doing the after hours events. The problem that I have with Mickey's Not So Scary is that, it, to me, it's it's billed as an after-hours event. And so I, and maybe it's my assumptions were incorrect, but we kind of expected the part to be at lower capacity, and it wasn't at all. Like, sure. don't get me wrong, I highly recommend everybody do it. It's a really fun party. The parade, the shows the fireworks, all those things are really, really awesome. But we got there and we were in the park before four o'clock when, you know, they let the Halloween party folks in. And at that point, I think like 4.15 or 4.30, the line for Jack and Sally was like three hours long. Jeez. And with little kids, you're not like the the whole point of us going there, I, I mentioned earlier, was for my son to meet Jack and Sally. There's Outside of us, like, waiting in a line right outside of Mickey's Town Square to get in line, like, there's no opportunity to do that in a realistic fashion with little kids. And that, that to me, was, like, really frustrating. And I knew, I knew that going in, that the line for that character meet was going to be long. Even on lower party nights, you know, I've routinely seen it at two hours and above. But, you know... The cast member explained to me, like, you're not going to see it below, like, 60 minutes. I never saw it below two and a half hours the entire time. Right there. <laughs> so it, it was it was basically a no-go for us from the beginning, which, we again, we kind of knew going into it that that was a possibility. And But the, the problem that I have is, like, we then, my daughter loves Ariel. We did Ariel's Grotto, and we, we hopped on that pretty quickly. But we come out and Ariel and Prince Eric are meeting, doing a character meet right outside of that rock. Yeah. We get in line. It, it took almost an hour Jeez. For, for one character meet. And there's a trick-or-treat spot right behind that as well. And the line for that was 30 to 45 minutes. 
And that that's pretty much what we experienced all night is, is we, we ended up waiting in line an hour for Eric and Ariel or almost an hour. And I, I get that Prince Eric is, I guess, popular amongst people that like to meet characters because he, you don't get to meet him that often, apparently. Yeah. But like, that was the case for everything. The line for Seven Doors Mine Train was 45 minutes. You know, the, the lines for the attractions seemed like a normal, normal day at Magic Kingdom, like a normal park day. And I'd say the same for the trick or treating, the same for the character meets, if not more. The so, lines so are just on. really Can long. I, trick or treating, like I thought you just like walk through and they gave you candy. It's not like you have to wait in a you line. You do. You have to wait in line to, to go through and the cast member, you know, dumps candy into your bag. And the and maybe there are, are secrets that I'm not aware of and, and really hadn't thought of. Like I I pretty in tune with those kinds of things. <laughs> Um, but I, I never saw a trick or treat spot that wasn't, you know, a huge line. And, you know, my wife and I were talking, maybe it's because we went on a Friday night, but the event on Sunday night was sold out. And well, from everybody I that I talked I'm... to, it, it just seemed like that's what the consistent experience was that the lines well, for everything were long. And I saw something, I think, today that. All of them are sold out except for one. There's one left that is not sold out. Everything else is sold out. I'm pretty sure that the last one ended up selling out today too. But you know, and maybe maybe those our expectations were wrong. I I don't know. But overall, like the park felt packed at the party to me. But all that said, you know, we did get Tron in the virtual queue. We did get a character meet that my daughter absolutely loved, and more important, the kids they love the parade and the shows you know yeah. seeing the hocus pocus sisters and all the villains that they they don't normally get to see for the show was awesome and the, the boo to you parade was really really great horseman like, the headless horseman you know it's awesome seeing him come down main street and we were right in front of the castle for that so i i, I absolutely recommend it to everybody especially if you have, if you have little kids that will enjoy that kind of thing. I think it's just important to kind of manage your expectations. I'll say like, I was a little disappointed in that regard, but I am giving the benefit of the doubt to, to the idea that like, maybe I just had mismanaged expectations from the get go with that. And you definitely are going to get lower wait times and stuff if you go later at night or if you stay later, because families like mine are ditching out at, 10 30 11 o'clock because my kids aren't going to make it you know <laughs> that much later so i'm sure you get you know more benefits the later that you stay but you certainly should not go to that kind of party expecting to get a lot done and you should have a very very specific plan of like what your priorities are like i, I said to my wife i didn't even think about this until like sunday we never even went into a store because we didn't have enough time to like look at the merch you know the limited edition yeah mickey's not so scary halloween party merch because of course i would have bought the kids you know a t-shirt and stuff like that we didn't even go we didn't even go in them because there just wasn't enough time yeah so so to me it was the polar opposite of what we experienced at the after hours event my wife and i but that said it was it was awesome and i'm sure the christmas parties like i really want to do one of those because I'm that's, sure that they're awesome. That's what we want to do. That's I think that's hopefully 25 will go down at Christmas time and do just depends on our school schedule. Honestly, that's what it really comes down to. Yeah, you got you got the you got the teacher vibes. So <laughs> that that's like, you know, I'm sure we'll talk over the next couple episodes, little anecdotes about the rest of our trip and, and things like that. But those are some of the points that I really want to nail home for our listeners because I think, you know, as, as ingrained as I am in the Disney stuff, and I think you are too, with the podcast and the website and being a travel agent, there's still stuff that we're learning and you, you kind of have to experience a little bit, but, you know, you have to really plan this stuff out. You can't wing it and you have to have some priority set, but the, you know, the trans between the transportation stuff and thinking through your rooms and your resorts and the parties I think there's a lot of planning involved in a Disney vacation and people that went like we did as kids, they don't realize 
now how much planning you have to do. Oh, you know, sure. otherwise you're going to go there and you're going to be waiting, you know, 110 minutes for a slinky dog and call it a day. And that's not the kind of experience that any, anybody wants, I think. So, yeah. Chip, did you have any other questions about any of that stuff or do you want to pop I, I did on have too? one. I did have one. Well, what did you guys go? Do we have costumes for the, the Halloween party or? So, the daughter went as Bo Peep. My three-year-old and the baby both went as Buzz Lightyear. I had a Woody t-shirt, and my wife had Buzz Lightyear ears. Nice. My mother-in-law made, like, a Hocus Pocus theme, like, little outfit or whatever. But we went with that that Toy Story theme. Not not too over the top, but stuff that the kids, you know, love and, and stuff like that. And, and I, I do think that you should, I would encourage everybody to do it up, like, if you're going to those parties, there were some really awesome costumes that we saw with families. Like we saw a family of like 12 or 14 that had all Alice in Wonderland themed. So they had Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Mad Hatter, like they had the whole squad, you know, dressed right. to the nines. And I, I, I think that that's part of what's fun about it, right? Is it's is dressing thing. up and. It's the only time as adults we can get dressed up. I mean, the kids they can they can always go as dress up or whatever. But as adults, I mean, it's the only time you're allowed in Disney Park to dress it up. Yeah, and and I I thought that we did it we did it up enough. You know, it's it's so hot, man. Like we we talked about like, do you want to put like face makeup on the kids and like you know have our our, our son be Jack Skellington, for example? But it's you know it feels like 95 degrees and humid. <laughs> you know, seven o'clock at night. So I think to, to a certain extent that becomes kind of miserable for the kids and, and stuff. But, you know, if you can do it, more power to you. Because I, like I said, there were some awesome costumes when we were there and, and I really enjoyed seeing them. And to that, to that regard, in that regard, it was a lot of fun. Let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about, we're going to do a couple new segments. First segment we're going to do is, is overrated, underrated Disney edition. Um, each week we'll talk about, or each episode, we'll talk about either a different resort, ride, restaurant, and Chip and I are going to tell you whether or not we think it's overrated or underrated and why. We'll do it as a quick segment. First one up is a resort. Yeah, okay. Whoever's listening, send us out what your thoughts are as well. That's, we want to hear what those are. No doubt. Tell us how wrong we are and, <laughs> and why why we're wrong and why we're idiots but here, here are our thoughts. Chip, first one, overrated or underrated Disney Resort, the contemporary? Oh, I mean, I think it's, personally, I think it's underrated. Especially, well, because it's got the, the rooms are big. I mean, that's that's the big thing. The rooms are huge. There's so much history. You got the Mary Blair stuff down in the in the lobby the monorail going through it it's underrated i think it's i think it's one it's probably my favorite resort to see because when i see that a-frame i know exactly where i am if you see it on commercial you know exactly where it is it's it's underrated it's it's awesome i'm gonna i'm gonna go overrated oh and just 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 like the pool doesn't the pool's great but it's not it's not like in my top three I think from a, a Disney aesthetic, like seeing it, you know, on the horizon or from far away, it signifies that you're at Disney, which I love. I, I agree with you there. I, I'm not a huge fan of the monorail in, in terms of Disney transportation. Like I, I'm not one of those guys that like wants to sit on it and feels like really nostalgic about it. It gets me ready to go. The kids enjoy it, but like, I'm going to choose the Skyliner if I am ranking transportation options over the monorail. And the the theming is a little too in your face for me in, in some of the rooms. I'm also like not a huge Chef Mickey's guy. So oh, like Chef not, Mickey's Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. It's it's too loud. It's way too loud. Well, it, it, it's one of those things that you have to experience with your kids at least once. Yes. Right. And so if you're if you're going on a once a year or you know a less frequent Disney vacation with your with your family. I recommend Chef Mickey's because it's as a character, you know, opportunity. It's Mickey and breakfast. Food's great. It's it's fine. Dude, um, Steakhouse 71 is the most hidden 
underrated restaurant that there is on property. So I will say that oh, until yeah. I die. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to save save that debate. I do like steakhouse, but, but the restaurants like they don't blow me away because you're not going to go to Steakhouse Seventy One or California Grill every night of your vacation, and you're not for the same reason you're not going to do Chef Mickey's. So the restaurant options are more like, you know, you're you're not going to consistently eat there. There is the benefit of being right across the street from Magic Kingdom, which you know you love that proximity. But overall, to me, I, I'm going to say it's it's overrated. Moving again, tell us if you agree with me, agree with Chip. Let us know your comments. The second one is a restaurant sticking on the same theme, California Grill. Chip, what do you say? Overrated or underrated? At its current state, it is overrated. The fixed menu is it doesn't appeal to me. The old menu when you could get sushi, and I think you get sushi now, but the old menu just appealed to me, appealed to my wife. We were actually going to look to do it this past trip, but fixed menu, my kids didn't want to do that. They, they don't, and it's 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 expensive, but it's worth it. Not with the fixed menu. The fixed menu kills it, in my opinion. Yeah, I I think that I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm really. Into, it's almost like a push for me, but I I do think it's a little bit on the overrated side. The view is is awesome if you can get it at the right time where you can see the fireworks or you can see the sunset then to me it's more on the underrated side because i would i would really recommend if you can score that reservation you should you should do it but for you know parents dads moms with little kids i think it's a little on the overrated side because your kids are not necessarily going to enjoy a michelin star type restaurant signature dining meal and, you know, so and maybe you save it for a little bit when they're older or something like that. They also, I think, don't appreciate the view as much. And frankly, I think, like, my kids are a little scared of going out there. I don't know if you guys experienced that or did you go, you might have gone before you had older kids, but. Uh, no, I, my wife would be more scared about my kids than my kids would be scared, I think. Yeah, and well, I definitely think there's part of that too. Is like you get a little bit of that dad or mom, um, you know, we're high up and it's a, a balcony kind of kind of vibe, but it's not somewhere where you're you're going out there and you're snapping a picture and you're coming back in. You're not spending a whole lot of your evening out there, so that that's really kind of where I land on it. But it the food is very good. I, I the I, I would prefer to be able to choose my own meal, but I do like the food, and I do think you get what you pay for in that regard. The last one, overrated or underrated, this one might be the one that takes the cake. We're doing a ride, haunted mansion, <laughs> overrated or underrated. I need to know, Chip, are you a haunted mansion guy or not? I am, but it's overrated. I like the Haunted Mansion. I think it's a good ride. It's a good dark ride. It's an original dark ride. I but I think it's overrated. I don't even think it's... If I miss it, I'm okay. Like, I, I probably hadn't ridden it since 2008. We rode it this past trip. My wife's like, we don't need to do that anymore. Like, just like it's not scary. She's like, I just didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, like, I don't get that, the, that, the following that... behind it. That's, I love it for, all right, so for me, it's, the Haunted Mansion is, as a whole, is definitely overrated. I enjoy it for the Disney nostalgia. Like, I get, like going and seeing the room stretch, and, and you just. Oh, that's the best part. Best yeah, part of you, that whole thing. You feel like you're at Disney, and, and there is a lot of that nostalgia factor, and you feel like a real Disney fan, which I think is is part of it. And seeing it from the outside i enjoy i like taking pictures of it in different points of the night but we get off it like the when my wife and i rode it at the after hours event because our kids aren't going to go on that they're they're too young they would be scared of being in the dark and and getting kind of freaked out about this stuff but when we rode it at the after hours event like my wife was like well like what's the hype behind this <laughs> like you're like what like why is it why does everybody want, you know, want to do this ride and love this ride? And I, again, I, I think it's more the nostalgia stuff, but it, to me, it's, it's absolutely overrated. It's certainly something that like, I don't mind if we miss it on a trip. So I, I agree with you there. Again, if you think we're stupid, you completely disagree. 
this might be our last episode. <laughs> send, send, the, send the DMs to Chip. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure that his Instagram handle is at the end of the podcast. Send them to him. So the, ne- the next little segment that we're going to do, and we're going to try and do some fun new segments on each episode. We're going to do Would You Rather Disney Edition. Chip, this is, we did not, we did not talk no, about these questions no. in advance. No. So th- this one's going to be fun. All right. Would you rather visit Walt Disney World on the hottest day of the year and have absolutely no shade? You can't enter any buildings and you can't enter any rides in a building. Or would you rather visit Walt Disney World on a day when it pours the rain nonstop the entire day? Ugh. Which oh, one would terrible. you rather do? That's terrible. I'll probably okay, take the rain. You know, I'll take the rain. I sunburn. I go in the summer and it's miserable, but not being able to go into a building or shade. I mean, I know my truth. I know my secrets around them, but I know I know how to get in shade and get in cold AC. So I'm gonna take the rainy day. What about yourself? Ah oh, man, I really thought this was tough. I think that I would probably take the rain too. And I, I think it's only because I've been caught in the you know the downpours oh, yeah. for a short period of time. And it's like once you get wet, you're wet, and it's like who cares at that point, right? Like, listen, listen, we're we're both college football players. We've played it in football in rain. We played it in, in snow. What, what's rain? I mean, what is rain? Yeah, I, 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 the like the the bigger part too is that like once everybody's soaking wet, I, I don't think that everybody gets crabby. But when you're hot and you have no shade, the kids get pissed. Yes. The wife gets pissed. You get pissed. Everybody starts to get a little angry. It's miserable. And yeah, it's just not. It's just not an enjoyable experience. Whereas kids will have fun jumping in puddles and stuff. So I think that would be fun. Yeah. The second and final one: Would you rather spend an entire day writing only "It's a Small World" or only the Haunted Mansion? If you had to spend an entire day. Oh, the Haunted Mansion. Oh, it's a small world. It's so annoying. I love it. I love it. It's 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 a great song. It's a great ride. I have to ride it. And my wife or my kids hate it, but I I make them ride it. But after looking at them so long, you you can't. I mean, you gotta go haunted mansion. At least I can figure out something new every time. You know, <laughs> it's haunted mansion for me, and I would probably pass out. Which leads me to another <laughs> another question: Have you ever fallen asleep at Walt Disney World, like on a ride or anything like that? Or in a show, Country Bears once. I think I would fall asleep on Carousel Carousel of Progress. I would definitely fall asleep in there, but I'd probably fall asleep more on the bus going home or going to or whatever. But not not really on a ride. I fell asleep in the Frozen show. I had Hollywood Studios. <laughs> and so it's did like, my no, father in law. So it good. was like, I, I don't know what was day four of the trip. And like, it was air conditioning. And I love that show. I think it's a lot of fun. I think that the actors do a really good job of making it fun adult humor and keeping it entertaining. And the, the, my daughter just loves it. She loves singing it. But I, there was just a point where I just couldn't hold my eyes up anymore. And I was just, oh. Just, yeah, just doing yeah, we've this. All been there. Yeah, I'm with you. I've been there. Yeah. All right. So now we've got a couple of listener questions before we wrap up. I know this has been a long episode, but hopefully it's been some good information for everybody. Chip, I'm going to throw these questions at you a little bit and, and I'll answer some. The, the first one I'm going to answer just because it was something that I probably got 30 DMs on Instagram about some form of is Kidani or a Savannah view worth the price at Animal Kingdom Lodge? So I want to I answer that really quickly. To me, the answer is that it depends. If you can get a good deal, which is something that we ended up, you know, scoring 35% off or whatever it was, where it's more in the range of Saratoga, sometimes Coronado, you know, or some of the, the moderates when they're more expensive, like, when it's more in that price range per night, I think it's worth it to do for at least one or two nights. I think the Savannah view in particular, I would prefer to get it at Jumbo House if, if possible. 
or at Kanani again closer to the lobby I think would be fine but I, I absolutely think it's worth it for one or two nights but you should definitely plan on as we talked about earlier staying at the resort for a day or two beyond that I think you're you're kind of wasting your money a little bit I I, I just think that like if you're gonna spend all the days in the parks and Chip I think this is one of the first things I text you if you're going on a five-day trip or more and you're going to spend a lot of days in the parks, you're absolutely wasting your money because the, the money that you spend is to be able to enjoy the animals and, and all the stuff that the resort has to offer. And, you know, in that regard, it wouldn't be worth it. But to me, if you can find it at the right price and you want this amount of view, it's definitely worth it for a one or two night experience. I agree too. If, if you're not, if it's like, you're, you've got a couple park days off in your or you're ending your trip i would end it there um but yeah you're right there, there's other part there there's other resorts that are going to be better for park people yeah I, I agree next question is from katie do you recommend bringing your own stroller or renting one are there any stroller restrictions we should know about if we want to bring our own Chip, you and I both kind of run into this issue and we've both experienced it both ways. What are your thoughts for you and your family? So I've done both. You said Kingdom Strollers. <clears throat> we ran it from Kingdom Strollers. We're, we're a double stroller. Uh, uh-huh. So we got to have the side by side. I know there are some restrictions. You can't take a wagon and there's a couple brands you can't take. They're just too wide or whatever. It all depends on if you need a stroller in the airport, then I would say take it your own stroller and I've, and I've done some, some research and stuff. If your stroller gets damaged, you could file a complaint. Like Southwest is really good. If they damage your stroller, they'll replace a, a stroller for you. If you can prove that you bought it within a certain time period or whatnot, but if you're driving, you may not want to, that might be precious cargo you, space you need and rent one. Uh, I know people that buy them down there, like they Amazon it, but, I think it just depends on you. We're going to take our stroller from here on out um, just because we are, we're cheap people. <laughs> so, and we need it for the, we need it for the, uh, the airport really is what we need it for. So it just, I would just say it depends on your, your, your situation. If you're flying, like I said, I would take it. If you're driving, maybe not. And I, I think the biggest thing too, is you've got to check the cost of, of the stroller rental. So I think, you know, we paid a very reasonable amount for five days. I want, I want to say it was 110, but don't quote me on that because I'm going to put out a YouTube video kind of giving my review of Kingdom Strollers. At this point, I've done Kingdom Strollers. I've done Scooter Bug, which are the two most popular stroller rental companies. Scooter Bug is the, quote, like official partner of Walt Disney World when it comes to, to stroller rentals. And they also do, obviously, scooter rentals too. There are some differences. I'll talk about that again on a, on a separate YouTube video. But in terms of whether or not to rent it or buy it, it really comes down to like, are you willing to pay the money to not have to carry it through all your transportation stuff? Yeah. Um, especially like, I think you and I both, you have to have a double stroller with you know two or more kids at Disney World. And we, we have the double Bob, which is like the one that you're going to rent. It's like the heavier duty uh, one wheel in the front, two wheels in the back, side by side, double stroller. We have that at home, the exact same stroller. But like that thing, I mean, it's not light. And you know, when you're folding it down and you're, you know, you're yanking it to, to get it condensed, it's still really big. It takes up a lot of room in the car on the way to the airport. It takes a lot of room in the rental car or the transportation, you know, from the airport to the hotel. So what we always tend to do is we'll rent a stroller, which again, to me, they're very affordable. Scooter Bug and Kingdom Strollers are, are both great. We'll rent the exact same stroller that we normally use, which is the Double Bob. It's great quality and, and all that stuff. A lot of times we'll bring our own accessories, like, you know, the cup holder and stuff like that we have from our own stroller. We'll pack that with us. But we also do bring a pop-up double stroller for the airport. We have a we have a very lightweight, like little pop-up travel stroller that like, will an, keep um, like the umbrella, the umbrella stroller type it, thing. It, it's like that, but it's a little bit it's a little bit bigger. I think it's an upper baby pop-out stroller. And okay. you know, I'll I'll try and link it in the show notes for, for any listeners. 
but it, it's a really really great stroller but it's a it's a little pop out and we use that in the airport for the kids then we gate check it and we get it you know all the way back and it helps us keep the kids situated for when we're getting our luggage and stuff you know because we're two parents and watching three kids and you know that that can be kind of difficult but i i definitely recommend running a stroller anytime you can because i think the cargo at some point in your trip is going to be precious you know that car space whether it's to them from the airport alone or from the airport to disney all that stuff matters um so i i would definitely recommend it and i think the the companies are are well worth um the review and everything else i think for the most part is all positive um last question is from michelle we're traveling to disney world in january our favorite month ago and I can't decide whether we want to rent a car we have two kids in car seats how do you get to the disney bubble with your kids thanks in advance chip what do you think i mean if you're it depends on where you're flying. I'm guessing Orlando is what I'm going to guess for the majority of people. And let's assume they're staying within the Disney bubble. Like, let's not. Yeah, for sure. They're not going offsite or to Universal or anything. I don't know in this context of that question, but let's just assume yeah, that they're only yeah. going to be in the Disney bubble. And let's. I'm, I'm assuming they're flying into MCO as well, or or Sanford, yeah. or, or whatever, for that matter. I miss Magical Express. I'm going to go out on a, on a little rant here. It was the best, and I, I get they it was free or whatever is in your fees, whatever. But it was the best. Now, with that being said, we're flying an MCO. I'm going to probably get a private transfer. It's, it'll be me, all of my kids, my wife, her sister, and my mother-in-law and father-in-law. We're going to do a private transfer because we just want to get off the plane, get our bags, and get to the resort. I don't want to wait on other people. An MCO, I will tell you this, MCO is with car rental. Not Because I, I look at stupid things like this. I look at car rental prices. That's one of the things I do every other day. It is astronomically higher at MCO than anywhere else I've ever looked <laughs> because I, I have to get, a, I have to get either a minivan or I've got to get a, like a, we, we, I drive a, like a suburban here. So I want something at least that size for, that's what I drove down to the airport. So I would just say for cost reasons, I would do a private transfer every time because then I can use Disney's transportation, which is the best transportation. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that really sums up my thoughts on it too. I hate renting a car anywhere, even when it's affordable. I, I can't stand doing it. That's one of the things that I love the most about Disney is the fact that I don't have to bring my car seats. I don't have to take the three car seats on a plane. I don't have to worry about my car seats getting damaged. And I can get to where I need to go quickly. We used Happy Limo this time, which brought, uh, again brought a Spur van. On the way back to the airport, the guy took us to Starbucks on the way. The, the service, the service was great. It was 150 bucks each way for you know what do we have eight, eight people. So with it, did they did they offer to stop at the grocery store or? So they offered, but we we actually we did Whole Foods delivery. Okay. for our resort before we got there which you know i would 10 out of 10 recommend any families do that you know we did it the day before we ordered put in our whole foods order set it for delivery like an hour before we arrived to kidani when we got there all our groceries were there they had them in a fridge they That's brought awesome. them up to our room i mean it, it was seamless just like being at home and then our kids don't have to eat like park food every morning for breakfast yeah. and snacks and stuff like that. So that's a good, you know, hack to save money and, and all that stuff too. But the, the driver did offer to stop at Target. I think he said, you know, he'll stop at Target or whatever. We didn't take him up on it, but, you know, the, the service was really great. And in comparison to mirrors or some of the other like shuttle options, it's not that much more expensive and you get to go with just your family yeah. straight to your resort, which is you know, a, a huge part of it. So I I hate renting a car. The only way that I'll rent a car is if we're also going to Universal, which I think we may be doing in January. You can also get Ubers that have car seats and things like that. You just have to wait longer. So there, there are other options or workarounds or, or whatever. But I, to me, I'll do anything I can to avoid renting a car. That's going to wrap up this episode. It's, I know it's been a long one. I, again, I hope that, you know, you had some fun with us. 
If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either of us on social media or via email. I can be found at, at Adventures of Disney Dad. Chip, let everybody know where they can find you. Disney Dad, or no, Robinson Dad Life at, on Instagram and then Chip Robinson on Twitter. We we may have to get you a, a new handle. I, you know, that's uh, so, something I specific. I can't, and... I can't give up Chip Robinson, at least on X or whatever it is, but. I'm willing to change things. I, I need to get one. I need to get one that just we, we might have to do that just for just for Instagram. But <laughs> if you're interested in having me assist you in planning your next Universal or Disney vacation, I am a travel agent with the Magic for Less Travel. Please feel free to reach out to me. All the links to get a free quote are in the show notes, or you can head to adventures of a Disney and, and click the get a free quote. Our services are free to you, and we'd love to help you plan your next dream vacation. If you have a moment, if you could follow, subscribe, like, and review this podcast on whatever platform you prefer, we would greatly appreciate the support. So far, the support has been overwhelming, and Chip and I greatly appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun getting to do this, and uh, we look forward to to doing more episodes. Uh, We know you have a lot of choices when it comes to the content that you consume, and we hope this episode brightened your day a little bit and helped you plan your next vacation. Uh, So thank you for spending some time with us, and we will see you next time. See ya.